and you've been doing comparative sports. And to me, I mean, there's no better role model than comparative sports itself. So let me just start by asking that how you sort of train your brain, you know, and also physically to be fit for a very competitive sports like cricket. Can you share some, you know, uh, insights with the colleagues here? First of all, thank you so much for having me and uh, of course for your vision. Because generally in Pakistan, we see a lot of achievers and no platform. And now we have this platform and hopefully uh, in the coming years we'll see a lot of other names, not just two or three uh, in the e-gaming industry. Um, as far as uh, my own journey is concerned and my competitive streak, I think uh, it has to start from, of course, there was whether it, we were playing Ludo in a family bag, uh, like in a family setting, or whether it was Tomb Raider, whether it was Need for Speed for me when I was growing up on uh, on computers, or uh, whether it was cricket in my backyard. I was a competitive person, um, uh, and I would love to do it in any kind of sport that I could. So I think that it started from there. Or jab aapka ek mindset ho jata hai competitiveness ka. So whether you are studying, you are playing, you are in any setting, mein hai, you have that competitive edge. And that's why I think when I was asked to come here, um, uh, the one thing that really helps is, is the power of the habit of winning. So even if you are playing a sport uh, online, even if you are doing well again and again, it kind of reaffirms your psychology as a player. Uh, or as a person. So I think that uh, that we can use, that tool we can use for ourselves. Uh, and of course, when, when we started off the women's cricket team or we started off playing, a lot of people would not understand. So a lot of people might not understand what you are doing uh, starting at the moment, but um, it's a great vision and uh, I'm really happy that there's a platform now for players rather than the other way around that there are players but no platform. Yeah, no, that's excellent. Uh and also, I mean, something which you said that you need to be very persistent. You need to be really challenge yourself. Uh, that's the that's the key for success in any field. And sports is no different, right? So let me also can I ask you a tough question? Of course. <laughs> yeah. So again, in sports in general, I mean, we see it still there is a lot of preference towards men, you know, playing sports and all that. And there's a stigma as well attached whether it's cricket or any other physical sports. How you see this changing in our culture? In our, and what has been your insights when you were training and when you were setting up Pakistan cricket team, going on international tours? I remember in our there were no women cricket tournaments, right? So it is still a relatively new phenomenon. How you come across, how you convince, and what is the advice for young girls here? Uh, so we started off from, um, from a question that why are you playing cricket? Uh, what is in, in it for the girls. We started off from there and especially the parents, there were a lot of reluctance from the parents of the girls because girls would always want to play. The girls needed an opportunity, a platform, but it was sometimes the parents, the elder brother, uh, who would question why are you doing it. And, and basically from there to uh, parents coming to us saying we want our girl uh, we want our daughter to play cricket. How she, how can she play cricket? So that has been the change, uh, big change. And how we have achieved it, first of all, with a lot of hard work, persistence. Um, we have lost a lot of games, but we won some important ones too. Um, and uh, what the other thing is about hard work, um, of course, there were challenges, when, whether it's injury, whether it's resources, whether it's lack of international cricket because of the terror atta attacks back then, we, we played all our cricket in foreign conditions initially. So that's why the winning ratio was not as good as well. So overcoming all those challenges, but uh, just finding that support system within our families. So most of the girls who initially uh, end up playing cricket were well supported by their families, whether their fathers, their brothers, myself also. I come from that particular uh, generation where it was the families who gave them, us the platform. So, so when we talk about this platform, e-gaming, for women, if they have the platform, it's kind of an equal thing. The computer doesn't know your gender. So if you are going to do well, uh, it's going to be equal. Even for us now, as women cricketers, there's still a lot of disparity um, as, as uh, the pay scales are concerned, but it's getting better and better every year. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely.
<laughs> this is the last question in context of the, the launch event here today, eSports. How do you see the future of eSports? Again, coming from traditional, I mean, I'm also coming from traditional mindset of sports. Where do you like to see the balance? And, you know, I mean, you already mentioned that there's a fantastic opportunity for girls to in there because computer doesn't know your gender, right? So any advice on eSports, how would you like to see the future outlook? Of this in Pakistan? I think first of all, uh, I, do, I, I do think I see Ursula Nash. He has been uh, a great role model for, for a lot of athletes. And I do think as a community, you can play a very important role in mentorship also uh, for coming, upcoming athletes, whether it's women or, 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 or boys. And for girls out there, um, it's time. People are going to say you cannot do it, but it's only that one person who doesn't believe in them and they believe in themselves. So it's all about listening to your own core belief and, and doing it until it's done. Um, the only time we cannot do anything is when we quit. That's the only time. Otherwise, no matter how many times you fall, no, many, how, how, no matter how many times you fail, if you have that belief in yourself, um, I think you can achieve anything. Um, I was able to go to the world number one ranking at one point, and I never thought I could because it was a team sport, and we were up against structures which had so many resources um, at the at the grassroots. So I would see Sania Mirza becoming number one with Martina Hingis, and I would be thinking, how can we as Pakistanis do it? But I kept at it, kept at it after 15 years into my career or 13 years into my career. If you don't give up, you can still do it. So I, I, at that point also I said if I could do it, anyone could do it because it was not easy at the start. I was not 100% successful at the start. So after, uh, after a, lot of, a lot of failures, a lot of learnings, uh, but if you are persistent, if you want to improve every day, you can achieve anything. Excellent advice, Anna. I mean, aim high, never give up, and be persistent, right? So Absolutely. Big and round of applause for Sana Thank you. Thank you so much.